Crash Bandicoot's heart was in the right place with simple, rewarding gameplay and a beautiful soundtrack, but left much to be desired from its bosses, save methods, and difficulty curve. So how would Naughty Dog deliver a more satisfying experience one year later? Of screaming. Crash Bandicoot 2 picks up right where we left off, defeating Vortex after our previous adventure and sending him plummeting to the ruins below. Luckily for him, the doctor finds power crystals in these ruins. You'll find out why those are important shortly. After which we cut back to his space station where his new assistant, Engine, informs him that they don't have any allies left to carry out his evil plans. So they decide to trick Crash into following through with his evil schemes instead. And it's executed horribly. In the grand scheme of Crash Bandicoot games, story of course is not the focal point. It's the gameplay. However, this is impossible to just brush aside because here they try to have this manipulative storyline going on throughout the whole game when the actual motives are blatantly revealed immediately. Then Embryo suddenly appears and tries to tell you to gather the gems to destroy Cortex's space station because Cortex is trying to turn everyone on Earth into mindless slaves, which is absolutely true because you see him talking about the exact same thing with Rocket Dome over here. All you have to do is just put the first two cuts scenes of the game out of existence. Now, it might be at least a little bit more believable that Cortex turned face. I mean, there's the obvious issue with the title too, but... Boom, call, crash 2, done. Plus Coco, you'll also find out who that is shortly, keeps hacking into Cortex's servers throughout the game trying to warn you not to help big fat poopy head over here. But Crash is just like, oh, well, what are you doing here? Anyway. Like I said, the gameplay, of course, is why you're here, and our boy Crash is back. He's back! Looking a bit thinner, you know, not like a brick. And with his girlfriend from the last game, Ton- Uh, no. That's actually Coco. His sister. So what happened to Tana? She ended up with Pinch. Oh, yeah. That incompetent rat, you ungrateful piece of shit! He basically jumped through the same hoops as last time. Break all the crates in a stage to get a gem. Well, almost every stage. But this time, we have a new collectible we need to retrieve throughout each level in order to progress. The Power Crystals. And you better make sure you get them or else Cortex throws a hissy fit. The levels are laid out a bit differently than last time. In contrast to the linear one level to the next hopping from island to island structure of the last game, here we are introduced to warp rooms. These warp rooms act as hub areas where you can select one of five levels to play in whatever order you want. As well as select a level in these warp rooms you can actually save whenever you want. Thank fuck! As you know, the save systems last time were dependent on either completing a bonus round or getting a gem. Now bonuses can be accessed just by finding a platform with a question mark in the level, which will take you to a bonus stage that can be replayed as many times as you want. These bonus stages are a perfect place to practice some of Crash's new moves without repercussions, as his moveset also went under a bit of an overhaul. Now being able to crawl, belly flop, slide, slide jump, and if you're really talented, you can do this spinny slidey jump thingy, which is incredibly useful. New moves, of course, mean new ways to approach enemies. Some can only be bounced on, belly flop, spun, some you can even hide underground from, and much more. And you'll have to be at the top of your game in order to unlock the brand new death roots. The death roots are much harder sections of the levels they're already contained in, and at the end of these roots you'll be rewarded with yet another gem. In order to collect the regular box gems, sometimes you'll need to be able to access these roots because some of them contain the boxes you need. I'm looking at you digging it, you maniacal f making me backtrack and shit. And you have to backtrack quite a few times in levels like cold hard crash and piston it away and it is mentally exhausted just thinking about it oh my god there's also five color gems you need to collect some of which are obtained through secret pathways and time trials or by cheating and these gems will unlock even more pathways to get even more boxes and more gems and yeah you're gonna keep yourself really busy playing this game speaking of secret pathways there are five levels in the game which contain secret gateways to a secret warp room containing five more levels three of the five gates in this warp room are just extensions to pre-existing levels whether it be for a colored gem or if they take you to sections where you can break more crates that you missed in your original run however two of the gates are to brand new levels containing two 
two more gems, not to mention there's even more boxes compared to Crash's first entry speaking both numerically and as in new types of boxes. There are newly added nitro crates which you die simply by touching. The good news is you can bash these green steel crates in order to remove all nitro crates in a level, at the cost of your own hearing of course. There's also reinforced steel crates which you have to belly flop to break. <laughs> Well, that was anticlimactic. Don't get too comfortable doing standard crash platforming because now you've got jet skis to drive, polar bears to ride, and once you're done with your furry friend, you reflect my being into a bloody pulpit for your own selfish desires. And of course, there's the brand new hover pack, which you'll use to avoid lasers, bombs, and tentacle form. If only I had a hover pack to avoid talking about these bosses. Nice segue, man. Ripper Roo is back looking all scholarly, doing some not so scholarly. So you have to avoid the TNT he plants on the ground and then Nitro until he blows himself up with it, allowing you to go in and spin him for the kill. Why a spin from Crash possesses more destructive force than f***ing explosives, I don't know. The Komodo Bros. Do I really have to say anything? Next up is Tiny, uh, sorry. Taz the Tiger, who's my favorite boss in the franchise up to this point. As he pursues you, you have to evade him by leaping from platform to platform until the rings you jump from start blinking red, which you have to then lure him into jumping towards because once they stop blinking, they fall. Engine is up next, piloting a mech that shoots lasers, missiles, and more lasers. Wow! Surpassing Tiny Engine is the best boss of the franchise so far. Ignoring the fact that his mech is destroyed by f***ing fruit. And it is such a shame that Cortex follows him up with, bar none, the worst boss battle in the original trilogy. Worse than Papu Papu, worse than Pinstripe, because just like some Spyro 1 bosses, Cortex doesn't even try to hit you. You just follow him through an asteroid field and hit him three times before he can escape. Whatever Crash can accomplish through its gameplay, as usual, is made up for with its terrific soundtrack, as Josh Mansell strikes again. Or in this case, back. Funny stuff. Crash Bandicoot 2 took everything wrong with Crash 1 and fixed it. Whether it be the save system, the difficulty curve, the boss sit- Okay, no, not the bosses. But even then, it tweaked little things in the game to make it as a whole that much better. Look at Crash, he doesn't walk like he can't bend his knees or elbows anymore. There's more personality to Crash through his death animations, running away from boulders and the big mama. There's more variety and overall graphical improvement to environments. The soundtrack accompanying them is even better than before. Yes, there are bits of level design and camera work that could have been executed a bit better. Bosses could have had a bit more thought put into them and the story is stupid but the positives here far outweigh the negatives crash 2 did exactly what it needed to do it took crash bandicoot from a heavily flawed dumb fun experience to something genuinely great and timeless but of course there's still room for improvement how will crash 3 take things even higher we'll find out after seeing if spyro 2 could follow in crash 2's footsteps thanks again for tuning into another review I mentioned on Twitter, which you should totally follow me on by the way, that I want to do YouTube streams very soon, so stalk my Twitter for updates on when that'll become a reality. Once again, thank you so much, it really does mean a lot, and uh, I'm gonna go sleep now, cause I feel like I have it in four days. Speak! Fuck! Good boy.